The number one question people always ask me when they call about relocating here is where should I live? And it's really subjective because it really is going to depend on what your lifestyle is. Do you work from home? Are you wanting a short commute? Do you care about good schools? Do you want to be at a high rise? All these things factor into where you should live. And you know, it's, it's kind of hard to always tell somebody unless they've been here before or they are going to come explore before they actually make a decision. So my friendly advice for today is if you're thinking about making a move, if you're already relocating, make sure that you come here to explore, give yourself some time to look around before you kind of make up those decisions. Now, what's interesting here is I'm gonna look at my notes. You know, when I talk about Central Ohio, I am talking about the 11 counties that make up the region. So Columbus is definitely, you know, that's our capital. That's right in the heart of our city, obviously. It's called Columbus for a reason. And when you live in these different areas, a lot of times you just say, oh, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, because it's the easiest thing to say. However, I call it Central Ohio because these 11 counties make up Franklin, Delaware, Fairfield, Knox County, Licking County, Logan, Madison, Marion, Morrow, Pickaway, and Union. And you can see all those on the map that just showed up there recently, kind of outlines where Central Ohio is. And so when people are thinking about relocating here, we have the ability to look at this entire region to make sure that they find exactly what they want because we get a lot of people that relocate from all parts of our country and not one size fits all and so i think we're very lucky that we are the size that we are that we can actually go out and look at around 11 different counties to make sure that we can find you the perfect home now I've done some research here over the last week and when this video comes out, this number I'm sure has changed. But when people call me, you know, obviously right now with interest rates being um, as high as they are, uh, you have the lack of inventory that is on the market. Home prices have increased substantially over the last three or four years. And so when I'm gonna give you this number, this is kind of like the new affordable home for for a family or for a good size home and it might not be affordable for everybody but this is kind of where we're at today and i'm going to use four hundred thousand dollars as kind of the baseline to go off of so in these 11 counties over the last week again this number could be up or down by the time this video comes out there was 792 homes that were at least four hundred thousand dollars or below and so if you are somebody that is looking in that price range, you know, you are going to have a plethora of homes to choose from. Now, the tricky thing is, is where are these homes located? And I will tell you that a lot of them are more in the rural areas than inside of, you know, definitely inside of downtown Columbus or even in some of the major suburbs. And this is single family homes, by the way, that is not taking into consideration condos or, or townhomes or duplexes or anything like that. And so we really have to look at where you can find these homes and is that kind of work for you or not? So when you're doing your homework, uh, even prior to thinking about making the move or if you've already kind of got this in motion, you know, look at those 11 surrounding counties and see if any of that lifestyle, those schools, that commute, whatever that looks like works for you. And then that'll help us kind of figure out where we can find the home that you can afford and if you're if you're up for living in those areas now if you're somebody that's moving here and you are looking for more affluent areas and i'm going to go 800,000 and above you are really going to be really zoning in on either franklin county or delaware county and again when i was looking at this there was about 125 homes on the market in that 800,000 and above price range. And so your pool of homes are definitely a lot smaller, but your competition, you know, is obviously a little bit less in our market uh, for those, we'll call them luxury homes. They're still competitive, especially in different parts of our, uh, of our market, but it'll be probably less competitive than those homes in that $400,000 price range. So that's the big thing when people call is where should I live? You know, this is my budget. Where can I find this home? And it's, it's always a delicate conversation. We have to thread the needle on where we're going to try to find this um, for our clients. But if you are somebody that's thinking about making the move, 
just don't consider Columbus the area to look at. Kind of look at all these 11 counties and figure out, does that really work for your lifestyle, your family, or, or not? And then that'll help you zone in the areas that we should be going out and finding you a home. Now, another thing people always ask me about in these communities is, hey, are there a lot of Airbnb homes in these areas? What are the regulations? Are they going to ruin the housing market? Are they going to ruin neighborhoods? And you know, while Airbnb is a very popular thing in most cities now, I think it became oversaturated. And so you are going to probably see some compression on those numbers. But some research that I've done is right now, there's around 1600 approved short-term rentals in our market um, here in central ohio and that is makes up less than one percent of all the homes not homes on the market just homes in general it's way less than one percent and so while you know in the city you will definitely see more airbnb uh, properties than in those rural areas this is not a investment that is ruining communities you know, there are other communities that have a ton of long-term, you know, renters in those houses and people don't love living in those neighborhoods because of, of that reason. And so when you think about this, it's not a huge deal. Most of the time there are communities that do not allow Airbnb at all. And so, you know, we just, if you're, if you're concerned about that, we can look in those communities. Uh, if you are somebody that wants to buy an Airbnb, we will not be looking in those communities, obviously, but that is always another question that I find is kind of odd, but I get it. People always ask about the Airbnb market and where these homes are actually located. Another thing that people ask me about housing, and I really didn't, I guess, fully understand why uh, until I started actually understanding other markets a little bit more, but people talk about HOAs versus non-HOAs. And there are just different groups of people that think about this differently. There are people that they refuse to live in an HOA community because they do not want rules and regulations about, you know, what size or what style of fence they can put in the yard, or can I park my RV in my own personal driveway for a week while I get ready for a vacation? You know, those people, or there are those people out there that they do not want an HOA. And so when I'm thinking about where are these places at, you know, there are some suburban communities that do not have HOAs, but that's gonna be few and far between. However, you will, you are really going to be looking mostly in the city. You know, there's a lot of neighborhoods in the city that they do not have HOAs. However, there's always city or township or corporation rules and regulations as well of what you can and can't do. But you're also going to be looking at more of those rural areas. So if you're somebody that has a lot of toys, ATVs, dirt bikes, four wheelers, RVs, boats, and you really, don't want somebody telling you whether you can park them in your driveway, your yard, your backyard, you want to build a barn, whatever that looks like, then really you are going to be looking more in those rural areas more than likely. Now, if you're somebody that's going to be living in the city, if you're not in a building per se, more than likely, you are not going to have an HOA that you are going to have to pay into or adhere to. Now, there are people that love HOAs. They love it because it keeps the neighborhoods um, looking right and tight. They take care of some of the amenities. Uh, you know, it just really depends on uh, what that person's looking for. And HOA fees can range, you know, from quarterly to monthly to yearly fees. It's all going to depend on where you're at. And the higher price point that you get in those communities, the higher the HOAs usually are, especially if it's more of like a private gated community or maybe it's on a country club stuff like that, your HOA fees then will obviously be a lot higher, more than likely than maybe some other areas. So definitely keep that in mind. Last but not least regarding housing, people always ask, should I buy new construction or should I buy homes that are already on the market that have been lived in by previous owners? And I really always think it's just, what do you feel comfortable doing? What kind of neighborhood do you want to be in? What's most important to you? There's advantages to both. New construction, you're getting obviously brand new everything, or if you're buying a, you know, a couple year old home, it's pretty close to brand new. And so you probably don't have those big capital expenditures like your HVAC, your roof, all those things. You probably 
are not going to have to spend money on for a long period of time. You also get a little bit more of a modern layout, fixtures and finishes, paint colors, and you are more than likely going to be in a new build community where all the houses kind of look the same, they're in great condition, the neighborhoods are newer, maybe they have newer amenities. So if that is important to you, then I think new construction is a great route to go, especially right now, a lot of times they have great rates if you use their in-house financing or they have some sort of builder incentives and they have spec homes available where if you're in a hurry and you don't mind some of those fixtures and finishes being done for you already, you know, you can get into a new build house within a couple months rather than waiting potentially a year. So that's the plus of, of new construction. Now the downside of new construction is neighborhoods aren't very established. You're not gonna get these big trees or you know big lots or anything like that. And so you have to kind of weigh that out. You're gonna find in a lot of more established neighborhoods where maybe the homes have been there for 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50 years, you are going to get more of that neighborhood feel more than likely big trees, larger lots, and so there's a lot of people that find a lot of value in that as well. And so I think that's very important to consider. Right now, I would say you probably can't go wrong with both. Both are more than likely going to be competitive. New construction, you're not necessarily competing with price, you're just competing for a waiting list sometimes or waiting for a lot to open up that you like on the market, depending on where you're at, you could be going in multiple offer situations and fighting the rest of the market. So there are pluses and cons to both, it really just depends on what's important to you and your life and what location that you wanna be in. Another question that I get from almost everybody is kind of the job market. Now, a lot of times when people are relocating to the Columbus, Ohio or Central Ohio area, a lot of times it is for a job, um, whether that job brings them back closer to family or they don't know anybody here and they're just coming for a great opportunity, more than likely that's why they're moving. And over the last three or four years, I've, I have done a lot of relocation business. A lot of people are coming here for healthcare, for tech opportunities. Also, we have a lot of big, uh, what I call warehouse, industrial, automotive things going on here. And so manufacturing is another one. And so we get a lot of people coming that are engineers, maybe they're executives, or maybe they're even the construction workers whose their firm has been contracted out to come. And so what I love about our area is we have a incredible jobs economy and we have a lot of big sectors that make up our market. When you think about tech and manufacturing and healthcare, not to mention even fashion with you know the limited brands and all their umbrella companies that they have, we have a really broad base of opportunities for people here. And so there's been a lot of reporting out about Columbus growing. And last year, I believe it was the fastest or, or maybe it saw the, the most people move to a city like per capita and it's really because of our job opportunities and how affordable things are compared to other major cities that are comparable to us. And so we just have a very strong job market. And so I think if you are looking for opportunity, if you're looking to move up in your career, if you're just getting started, Columbus is a great place to find whatever that you are looking for. And then maybe that job is a good starter for you here. And maybe you branch off somewhere else. And a lot of times people will come back home then after they've been gone for a while for maybe that next tier job or that third tier job that they're after. So I just think we have a lot of options here. And so if you're thinking about making a move or if you're already relocating, be confident that the job sector is strong here and you're gonna be able to keep growing in whatever career that you find. Another really important question that people always ask when they move here is, I wanna be in walkable neighborhoods. Well, I always ask, what does that mean to you? Does that just mean sidewalks and maybe a park in the community? Do you wanna be able to walk to some restaurants and bars and shopping? Everybody has a different idea of what walkable neighborhoods mean. So let's dive into your traditional walkable neighborhoods that you can walk to coffee shops and restaurants and bars. If you look on the map here that comes up, we're gonna highlight the short north area. Just to the west of that is Victorian Village. Just to the east of that is Italian Village. These areas are immensely popular for, I would call it a younger crowd, young professionals right out of college. And we also get a lot of people who retire, who wanna move back into the city that live in some of these big Victorian homes that live close to the park, 
um, and some, some different areas, some new construction that is in Italian Village. If you look at these three areas, this is where all of your restaurants and bars and boutique shopping will really take place in our city. And so they make up really incredible walkable neighborhoods. Now, if you go a little bit farther south of downtown, you get the German Village area, Marion Village. And in German Village, you have a lot of uh, parks that you can walk to, Schiller Park being one of the mainstays here in Columbus, but you also have great restaurants such as Cento, Lindy's, you have Brown Bag Deli, Old Mohawk. Uh, you have some really great staples in German Village. And if you're in Marion Village, while you don't have a ton of restaurants that are down there, you have easy walkability to Schiller Park as well as all those places in German Village. So if you are somebody that wants to live in the city, those are gonna be incredible walkable neighborhoods for you. Now, if we look on the map, we can go just west of uh, Columbus and we can get into the Grandview Upper Arlington area. And while these aren't necessarily really walkable to a lot of different things, except if you live close to Grandview Avenue and Grandview, there are beautiful areas to, to live in. You have sidewalks so you can walk the dog, walk your family, you can walk the parks. They're very charming neighborhoods. And so I always think those are great walkable areas as well. If you don't wanna live in the city or close to the city and you're looking to be out in the suburbs, then it's really gonna going to be uh, neighborhood specific. Some neighborhoods have parks, they have bike trails, they have sidewalks, and other neighborhoods have none of that. So we really will just have to do some deep dive on what those look like. But if you definitely want walkability and you wanna live in the city, those are my big recommendations to check out if you're thinking about making a move. One of the biggest questions that I get asked when people are thinking about or are relocating to Central Ohio is school districts. And we have talked about schools more times than I can count on this channel. If you want to learn about the schools, go back to most of my videos and I talk about it. Uh, it's, it's the biggest question that always gets asked, so I'm happy to talk more about it, but I'll keep it brief. So Central Ohio has some wonderful public and private schools. What I would recommend you doing is getting on a website called niche.com, N-I-C-H-E.com, and you can search by school district, you can search by region, by individual schools, public, private, charter, you name it, you can search it. And this is going to give you a really great blueprint or map to what these different schools have as far as their rankings, what they pay their teachers. There's reviews on there, what people think about the schools. And so those are, um, or that is a really great resource to get a better understanding of the different schools. Right off the top of uh, my head, you know, we can talk about the top three public schools that seem to be ranked every year. Dublin, Ontangy, New Albany, and then you mix in Upper Arlington in there. It kind of all floats around, you know, in the top three or four. I think every phone call I get, people who have already done their research, those are the four that they talk about or the three that they talk about. And then that's kind of what I'm talking to them about as well, if they're really wanting some pretty predominant public school. If you're talking about private schools, you've got all girls school, you've got Catholic schools, you have a whole mix to choose from. And so I would just suggest getting on that website, taking a look, and then what we can do is when you narrow down, I can always provide you references to clients that live in those school districts. Or if I don't have clients that live there, I have friends or family that can talk about those areas in the school districts as well. So that's a great reference point. So definitely take advantage of that when you wanna learn more about those school systems and the areas that they reside. So get on niche.com, check it out. Actually, the link is in my bio uh, below. So you can go there and get some more information. This is one thing that Ohio gets hit on the hardest is what is there to do in Ohio? And while we don't have the ocean, while we don't have big, beautiful mountain ranges, we don't have the desert, we don't have a ton of lakes, there are still things to do here. You just have to look a little harder. And so I will start in the city and let's work our way out. So if you live in the city or if you love coming to the city, we have things like the Ohio Theater, the Franklin Park Conservatory. We have a uh, large symphony center being built uh, over in the peninsula area of Franklinton, which is going to be absolutely amazing. We are known for our concerts in the summer, our festivals. We have professional sports teams with the Columbus Crew 
crew, the Columbus Blue Jackets. We have uh, minor league baseball. Those air, those uh, those complexes are right in the city. We have tons of parks. Whether you're into fitness uh, uh, shows, walking around, dog parks, you name it. We have everything that you could possibly imagine located, kind of in the city. Plus all just the normal shopping and and plethora of restaurants that we have. Now, as you move your way out, we are close to Hocking Hills, which is about an hour, hour and a half, depending on where you're located in Central Ohio, which is really great for hiking. A lot of people go down there for a short weekend. They'll stay in these beautiful Airbnbs. Some of the Airbnbs down there, they actually are some of the most, I guess, um, viewed Airbnbs on social media. They, they just done a great job down there. One of my good friends owns a place called The Oasis. I'll drop a link in the section below so you can go check it out and uh, go visit. It's absolutely amazing what they've done on this compound of Airbnb properties. You have So you have Hocking Hills, you've got tons of bike trails, uh, we love uh, biking, so there are a lot of people that do a lot of road bikes. New Albany is really known for this. Every time you know it's beautiful out, I see just you know, a ton of bikers on the road. Whether they all have like their own little unit that they're in, maybe they're doing some sort of peloton or some sort of race. But I know road biking is really prominent here. Um, we have some bodies of water, whether that's the uh, Hoover Reservoir. We have uh, Buckeye Lake, you've got Indian Lake close by, Apple Valley Lake, you know, and whether they're not massive lakes and they're not big, beautiful bodies of water, the scenery is absolutely amazing. There's some beautiful houses there. There's some really cool restaurants. People love to go up there and whether they're on their boat or they're sailing, they're kayaking, it still gives them the ability to get on some water and really enjoy all the things that that has to offer. Now, as far as in the winter time, we don't have a ton of skiing, but we have some places that you can get away to and maybe have some fun, especially with your kids. You know, whether that's Mad River Mountain, which is located in Bell Fountain, Ohio, which is just a little bit north and about 50 miles west of downtown Columbus. Uh, you've got a place up in uh, Mansfield, Ohio. You're close to uh, uh, Pennsylvania that has a number of different ski ranges as well as West Virginia. So you have some places that you can uh, you can drive to within a day, which is really great. But I will say this, people don't really realize this, but Columbus is located in this perfect little center of so many amazing cities. You can get to Detroit, Toledo, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Nashville, all within a day. And so you could have a long weekend, you can do stuff there and back. It's just located perfectly. And so whether, or while you might not be able to find everything that you want in Columbus, you have these short little drives that you can get to. If that's not enough, you can take quick flights to the East Coast, to Florida. And so while things to do is relevant to everybody, I just think Columbus has a lot of stuff to do here locally, but if you want to escape, it's really easy to get in and out of this place. So I think people really take advantage of that opportunity. As we wrap up the ultimate guide to living in Columbus, we are going to finish with the weather. That is another big question that people always ask. And I think the weather has changed a lot here over the last few years. And while you can say, oh, it's global warming or whatever, and maybe it is, who knows? It's just been a little bit different lately. So in the summer, it's going to be hot and humid. That's just the bottom line. I hate summers. I do not, I do not like being uncomfortable and sweaty and sticky. Love the sun. I love the fact that it's not snowing or you know really cold but I'm not a real big fan of humidity. And that's just what it is here. So if you're not used to that, that is something that you better get used to, or you at least better have an aware, awareness of that's going to happen. We have the fall here and yeah, I'm going to sound pretty basic. I love the fall. It's the best time of the year. I love wearing jeans. I love wearing long sleeve shirts or a light jacket. It's absolutely beautiful here. When I just talked about going down the Hocking Hills, the hike or being in our Metro parks or being, you know, on a bike, riding out in the country. I, I just don't know what else really matches that. And a lot of people that aren't used to having that fall season when they come here, they absolutely love it as well. So definitely keep that in mind and you 
just stick around for it because it's it's beautiful. Then we get into the winter months. And in the past, winter has been cold and dreary and snow and ice and wind and all these things. But the last few years, I feel like the winter has been a joke. Yeah, we get some snow or some cold days here or there, but overall it's been pretty mild and it's been pretty easy to get through. We have some great friends that are our neighbors that I helped relocate here from Arizona a couple years ago and I was prepping them for how bad the winter was going to be and make sure you have a snowblower, make sure you have this and that. And while they have used those things here or there, I really haven't had a lot of need for that lately. And so I just think things are changing in our world, obviously, and maybe we get to the point where our winters here are super mild or they can always revert back because it's mother nature and weather is unpredictable. So you just don't know. The least favorite time of the year, and I know I said summer probably was, but more I think about it, spring sucks. It's cold, it's rainy, it's cloudy, it's windy. It'll be nice one day and it'll be crap the next day. I don't love spring. The only reason I love spring is winter's over. And if the winters aren't that bad, who cares about spring? So just be prepared. We have all four seasons. I think that's great. It changes things up. You don't get bored of just it being warm or cold all the time. And a lot of people that I've helped relocate here, they think the four seasons are great. So definitely keep that in mind if you're thinking about making a move. Now, as I wrap this up, I would love a couple things for you guys. Number one, Subscribe to this channel, drop a comment, give us a like, notify the bell. We wanna alert everybody when we do these videos about living in the Columbus Metro or surrounding areas, like you guys learned today, Central Ohio. The second thing is, I'm a licensed real estate agent here in the state of Ohio, and I would love to help you with your real estate needs. So give me a call, shoot me a text, fire off an email. Let me help you out with your move, whether that you're coming to Columbus or you already live here. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Living in Columbus. And today was your ultimate guide to moving here.